We move on to the second problem. Here we are given two lines. Line L1 is defined by the parametric equations x equals 2s, y equals negative s, and z equals negative 3s. On the other hand, L2 is defined by the parametric equations x equals negative 1 minus 4t, y equals 2t, and z equals 3 plus 6t. First, we are asked to show that L1 and L2 are parallel lines. To do this, we start by determining the direction vectors of L1 and L2. By looking at the coefficients of s in the parametric equations for L1, we can take the direction vector v sub L1 of L1 to be the vector with coordinates 2, negative 1, and negative 3. Similarly, by looking at the coefficients of t in the parametric equations for L2, we can take the direction vector v sub L2 of L2 to be the vector with coordinates negative 4, 2, and 6. Notice that the vector with coordinates negative 4, 2, and 6 is equal to negative 2 times the vector with coordinates 2, negative 1, and negative 3. This tells us that the vector v sub L2 is negative 2 times the vector v sub L1. Since v sub L1 and v sub L2 are scalar multiples of each other, we say that v sub L1 and v sub L2 are parallel. Now when the direction vectors are parallel, this either means that L1 and L2 are parallel, meaning L1 and L2 do not intersect, or that L1 and L2 coincide, meaning L1 defines the same line as L2. To show that they are indeed parallel, we exhibit a point in L1 that is not in L2. Observe that the point with coordinates 0, 0, and 0 satisfies the parametric equations of L1 by taking s equals 0. This tells us that 0, 0, 0 is a point in L1. Now we check if 0, 0, 0 is a point in L2 by solving the following system of equations. Basically, we equate the parametric equations of L2 to the coordinates of the point 0, 0, 0. Notice that the second equation gives us t equals 0, but this is inconsistent with the first and third equations in the system. Hence, 0, 0, 0 cannot be a point in L2. The fact that the direction vectors v sub L1 and v sub L2 of L1 and L2 respectively are parallel, combined with the fact that the lines L1 and L2 are not coincident, tells us that L1 and L2 are indeed parallel lines. The next problem, 2b, asks us to find the equation of the plane containing the lines L1 and L2. First, we name the plane that we wish to find to be pi. To write an equation for pi, we will need a point r lying on pi and a normal vector to pi, which we will call n. To better understand the problem, let us illustrate it first. So this is pi, the plane that we want to find. From the construction of the problem and from 2a, we know that L1 and L2 are parallel lines lying on this plane. Now if we have a point P in L1 and a point Q in L2, we can connect them to form the vector PQ. The line PQ and the line L1 are non-parallel lines lying on pi, so to get a normal vector n to pi, we can take it to be the cross product between the direction vector V sub L1 of L1 and the vector PQ. This resulting vector n would be perpendicular to both PQ and V sub L1. To visualize the direction of the cross product of V sub L1 and PQ, align four of your fingers, excluding your thumb, to the direction of vector V sub L1, then clench your fist by moving those four fingers in the direction of vector PQ. Where your thumb is pointing is the direction of the cross product between V sub L1 and PQ. If you reverse the order, that is if you compute PQ cross V sub L1 instead of V sub L1 cross PQ, you get a vector pointing at the opposite direction. You can check that this works for our plane pi as well. 
Finally, we note that since P and Q are both lying on pi, we can take R to be any of these two points. Now we write this more concretely. But first, we make a few observations. For L1, by taking S equals 0, we get a point P in L1 with coordinates 0, 0, and 0. Moreover, by looking at the coefficients of S in the parametric equations for L1, we can take its direction vector V sub L1 to be the vector with coordinates 2, negative 1, and negative 3. Next, for L2, by taking t equals 0, we get a point Q in L2 with coordinates negative 1, 0, and 3. Furthermore, similar to L1, we can look at the coefficients of t in the parametric equations for L2 to get a direction vector V sub L2 of L2 given by the vector with coordinates negative 4, 2, and 6. From our demonstration before, we can take R to be either P or Q. In our case, let us just take R to be the point P with coordinates 0, 0, and 0. You can check that R equals Q works as well. Next, to get a normal vector to pi, recall that we connected P and Q to form the vector PQ with coordinates negative 1 minus 0, 0 minus 0, and 3 minus 0. Simplifying, this is just the vector with coordinates negative 1, 0, and 3. Remember that we can take our normal vector n to be the cross product between the direction vector v sub l1 and the vector pq. We can also check that we can take n to be the cross product between the direction vector v sub l2 and the vector pq. In our case, we just take n to be the cross product between the direction vector v sub l1 and the vector pq. To compute, we refer to the following matrix with entries i, j, k on the first row, the coordinates of vector v sub l1 on the second, and the coordinates of vector pq on the third. Excluding the first row, we look at the second and the third column to get the x-coordinate of n. The third and the first column for the y-coordinate of n. And the first and second column for the z-coordinate of n. This gives us the vector n with coordinates negative 3, negative 3, and negative 1. Finally, we set up an equation for pi. So pi is given by the equation, the x-coordinate of n, which is negative 3, times x minus the x-coordinate of r, which is 0, plus the y-coordinate of n, which is negative 3, times y minus the y-coordinate of r, which is 0, plus the z-coordinate of n, which is negative 1, times z minus the z-coordinate of r, which is 0. Then equate this all to 0. Simplifying, we get negative 3x minus 3y minus z equals 0. Finally, we can multiply both sides by negative 1 to get 3x plus 3y plus z equals 0. Finally, we go to the last problem. Here, we are asked to sketch the plane we got in 2B. That was the plane we called pi, given by the equation 3x plus 3y plus z equals 0. We already know that the point with coordinates 0, 0, 0 is on pi. In fact, 0, 0, 0 is on L1, which lies on pi. This tells us that the origin is on pi, and when this happens, we simply take two other points, preferably on two different coordinate planes, and connect them. Let's try to look for points on the xy plane. 
on the xy plane, z is set to 0. So we get an equation 3x plus 3y equals 0. There are many solutions to this being an equation in two variables, but one solution that comes to mind is when x equals 1 and y equals negative 1. This gives us a point in pi with coordinates 1, negative 1, 0. Next, we take a look at the xz plane. On the xz plane, y is set to 0. So we get an equation 3x plus z equals 0. One solution to this, and again this is not unique, is when x is equal to negative 1 and z is equal to 3. So we obtain a point in pi with coordinates negative 1, 0, 3. We now have three points, the origin, one point on the xy plane, and another point on the xz plane. So now we can start sketching. First, we plot the three points that we have, starting from the point 0, 0, 0, to the point 1, negative 1, 0, and finally to the point negative 1, 0, 3. Then we connect these points to form a triangular plane. And that's it! You are only asked to sketch a portion anyway, but just to be clear, a plane expands indefinitely. To visualize this, just imagine tugging or pulling the three points that we have with respect to the orientation of the plane, as shown in the figure.